The heated feud between John Keats and Lord Byron was a very real one. A competing rivalry, not dissimilar to that of da Vinci and Michelangelo in earlier centuries, there was no love lost between the young poets. Two titans of the English poetic tradition, Lord Byron and John Keats, are shadowed by perhaps only Shakespeare in the world of English literature. Leading figures of the Romantic movement in the early 19th century, along with Percy Shelley, they form somewhat of a holy trinity in poetry and writing. Though the poets are equally revered today, their experience as writers was starkly different in their own time. Lord George Gordon Byron was well received during his life, whereas John Keats was not. Having an aristocratic pedigree, an early success with his debut work Child Harold's Pilgrim, Byron enjoyed all the trappings and luxuries of celebrity. Furthermore, his fortune of being born into the landed gentry meant he was unburdened by the stresses of money, or lack thereof. Keats, on the other hand, was of the middle class, and whilst by no means poor to the standards of the day, the lifestyle that his contemporary Byron had was something he simply could not aspire to. Furthermore, Keats's work was not well received during his tragically short life, and was often savaged by the great critics of the age. He was advised that poetry was the provenance of noblemen such as Byron, and dismissed by Byron amongst others as a cockney poet. So here we can see one element to the feud. In the deeply entrenched class society of Regency England, Keats was looked down upon for his lowly birth, and this bias undoubtedly corrupted the views of many of his peers. There is a simple level of envy that Keats felt towards Byron's higher societal status, which is understandable enough. This exacerbated his belief that his rival's success was due to his noble blood, as opposed to the quality of his work. With Keats once remarking, you see what it is to be six foot tall and a lord, upon reading another glowing review of Byron's work. However, as well as the feud being markedly social, as to say classist, there was a creative schism between the two poets. Byron revered the 18th century Augustan poets, particularly Alexander Pope, whose adherence to the classical tradition is echoed in his own early poetry. Keats's work, however, was deeply at odds with the Augustans, going as far to critiquing their work in his Sleep and Poetry, which Byron incidentally read. Byron took Keats's critiques of Alexander Pope particularly poorly. To put simply, Byron disliked Keats's poetry, and Keats felt likewise about Byron's work. He considered it overrated, tired, and unoriginal. Sadly, Keats died at the age of just 25 years old. The two never reconciled their disagreement, and when it was suggested that Keats had perished due to the stress he felt from all his poorly received works, Byron scoffed at and even enjoyed this idea, and with Keats dead, he got the last word in their feud. Byron wrote, John Keats, who was killed off by one critique, just as he really promised something great, if not intelligible without Greek, contrived to talk about the gods of late. Much as they might have been supposed to speak, poor fellow, his was an untowards fate. Tis strange the mind that very fiery particle should let itself be snuffed out by an article. Harsh words indeed. However, as more time passed, Byron seemed to have developed some respect for Keats as a writer, but still maintained that his approach to poetry was still incorrect. So there you have our little insight into the fascinating feud between two of England's most celebrated poets and writers. Though sadly, Keats did not enjoy the level of fame and adoration that Byron did in his own lifetime, he now sits with his old rival on the pantheon of English literature. Who do you prefer out of Byron and Keats? We would love to read your answers in the comments section. Thank you for joining us at Canned History. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, then like, comment and subscribe.